It's May 2022, the first warm day in Berlin, and I'm sitting in Kreuzberg in a restaurant. The restaurant actually has been in uh, a pharmacy before. I turned it into a restaurant, sitting there. I feel the warm touch of like the, the late afternoon sun. I'm sitting there talking to Lawrence. Lawrence is Moonfair's co-CEO, and he actually just made me an offer to join the company. When I talked to Lawrence that evening, just flew in from Austin, talking to my, my Cloudflare team, spending a few days with them. And when I joined Lawrence for that dinner, I had like a few interviews before, and we talked, and he said, yeah, I think Moonfair is the right moment, the right company, I'd love, to, I'd love you to join. And I said, yes, well, otherwise I wouldn't be here, but I said, yes, I want to, want to work for Moonfair. In that moment, very little did I know what would expect me over the next years. And I knew nothing about the certainty of me needing to use all my knowledge on how to flex my focus. Today, I'm going to talk about how I flexed my focus over the years in the different companies that I work for. And I want to help you to also flex your focus going forward and make the right decisions in the right moments during your career and especially during building a startup. I'll talk about like three things that are important when you want to flex your focus. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is simplicity. And talking about simplicity, I actually start with the first company that I work for, Zalando. This is one of the first logos of Zalando. Actually, it says shoes and fashion online. And that's what we did. We sold shoes and fashion online. That was 2010. And what made Zalando successful at that time, being one of the first retailers selling shoes and fashion online, was the simple focus on that one thing. It was how can we make the user experience for someone who wants to buy shoes or wants to buy apparel as easy as possible. How can we make the delivery easy? No like delivery fees, no return fees. Um, we had like pay by invoice, which was um, by now pay later before the term actually existed. And that was a very, very clear focus and like a clear mission that we worked on. But then, of course, Zalando grew and grew very fast. And the discussion came up on what is the next thing that we want to that we want to offer our customers. And then we start to discuss, OK, well, fashion is a, quite a broad term. So what is fashion? So we thought, well, this, well, this is shoes. So that's pretty clear. And that also looks fashionable. And next one, that fashion pretty much looks like fashion. But then we came to this, it's that fashion. Yes, it kind of looks fashionable, but would you count beauty products and like um, home furniture or home accessories, would you call that fashion? And at that point in time, we said, yeah, it's kind of close enough. So we call it fashion, and we try to launch it. So we built a team, like bought uh, home and beauty products, and tried to sell them to our customers and tried to bring them to our customers. What we figured out is that one of our key propositions 
wasn't working as well as we thought. And one of our key propositions was logistics. This is one of the Zalando warehouses. I was actually luckily part of building that up with like our own technology at that point in time. And we learned quite fast actually that home and beauty products, while they might be fashion, they work quite differently to like apparel and shoes. So if you think about home products, even if you take a lamp, that has quite different formats than shoes. Also, it can break and it doesn't fit in your normal, like, uh, like in, in the normal packaging. It doesn't fit in like the normal shelf. So we needed to rearrange our whole warehousing around that. But then there was another issue with uh, fragrances they do actually burn, like they are flammable. So, and for flammable products, there's a totally different regulation. And from, hey, we are just extending the term fashion to include beauty and home products, we came to the point of, well, it actually isn't that easy as we thought, because there's a lot of things that we didn't think about at first, but that make this simple thing into actually quite a complex thing. The learning from this, we actually closed down uh, beauty and fashion at that point in time. And um, on this learning, I uh, want to share a quote with you. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Leonardo da Vinci. Well, actually, I used that same quote on a different conference. And then someone came up to me and said, Mark, he actually never said that. And I did some research, and he actually didn't say it. It's still a really, really good quote. So let's keep it. Let's stick with simplicity is the ultimate sat satisfaction, uh, sophistication. And now people who use, who use Zalando like in the last month? Someone bought at Zalando? One, two? You most probably saw beauty products on Zalando. This is because a few years later, the company grew, right? we had more capabilities, we had more flexibility in logistics. We actually started selling beauty products again with the knowledge we had before and like kind of with being able to use that bigger company, bigger team, bigger knowledge, better technology, better warehousing to then successfully ship beauty to our uh, customers. And this leads me to number two. First one, simplicity. Second one, timing and time. For time, I want to go into my journey at Cloudflare. So who uh, of you who don't know Cloudflare? Cloudflare is uh, one of the big, biggest internet infrastructure providers. Um, started with providing uh, CDN, but nowadays also provides like zero trust solutions, internet, uh, compute, storage, quite a lot of things. So it is actually a company that has a ton of different products. So why do I take Cloudflare as an example of how to focus? Well, Cloudflare has one very interesting Thing. And that was something that Matthew, the founder and CEO, already introduced very early in the company, is it has a clear mission and a clear foundation that the teams can build on. So the mission from day one has been helping to make the internet better. And that is the basis of what everything that Cloudflare teams should be working on is and that means in the end there is already like a first level of a boundary around like what teams can do and the second one he also made it very clear that things need to be built on top of each other and that we need to make sure that we're taking the right steps one after another and that you can't start at the end of a big product you have to have the foundation ready and one thing that Cloudflare uses every year during their birthday, they have a birthday week where they announce new product launches, where they announce new products that uh, have been envisioned. And in that birthday week, 
there's always one main theme. And going through a few birthday weeks with you, you'll see that they're all built on top of each other. So in year one, Cloudflare announced IPv6. Like, that was pretty new by then. They existed, the technology existed for a while, but they said, okay, we'll be IPv6 compatible throughout, and we want to really make this the new standard. And then in year four, they said, okay, HTTPS is a cool thing, but usually at that point in time, you still had to pay extra for it. But they said, okay, we get rid of, we don't have to pay extra, we just give encryption to everyone for free. And that is like kind of, it's building up on, well, first we have the infrastructure, and then we're building the next step on top. And then in year seven, they announced Edge Compute, Cloudflare Workers, which in the end allowed everyone to like render, build, calculate, compute their website as closest as possible to the actual user, which made everything faster, run everything, make everything run smoother, and that was like a really, really big step. But it also needed all the infrastructure that Cloudflare had built before. And we go another four years, Cloudflare announced R2, which is a data storage. Kind of being from, okay, we make the infrastructure of the internet, then, hey, we allow you to compute on our like, service closest to your user, and now you actually can also store stuff there. And then, well, next step, year 13, which was actually last year, they announced, okay, now we want to, on one hand, also run, you are able to run like AI LLMs on our edge. We're making them secure because that's actually something that is really important. And you can use workers with that. But all of that actually depends on what has been done before. So in the end, it is a lot of different products. And then you think about like having AI on the top of the pyramid that we're talking about versus, OK, we launch IPv6 for everyone. That's quite a journey. But there is like the right timing and there's the right building on top of each other through this journey. And in the end, you end up with a nice pyramid. And on Cloudflare, I want to give you one example of a product that my team and I actually built based on this, uh, on this framework and based on this foundation. So most of my time when I worked at, at Cloudflare, I was part of what they call ETI, which is Emerging Technologies and Incubation. That's where our job is to build new things, which is kind of cool, but goes against, OK, let's focus on something. But I'll give you an example of one product where it is new, but it's also not new. And this product was Cloud for Images. So Cloud for Images is an end-to-end -end solution for storing, resizing, optimizing, and delivering your images. So the idea is you just upload your image once, and then depending on what device, what country, what internet connection the end user has, the image gets rendered in the perfect format, in the perfect size. So if you have a slow internet connection and a small device, you get a very small image. If you have a like, huge device and an extremely fast internet co co connection, you get a super high quality image. And to build that, we needed two really important um, ingredients. The first one, storage. Because, well, we needed to store those images somewhere. And the product was only viable from the moment on where we had our own storage solution. Because otherwise, where would we store it? Like, we would completely break like, the whole frame, and we would break the whole model of how Cloudflare builds successful products. So once R2 was launched, we were actually one of the first users of R2 internally we were able to store our images. And the second one was, well, compute. Because like, in the end, to have the right format ready for every user, well, we need to render it as close to the user as possible. So in the end, we used 
software workers the same solution that actually everyone could use to build this like rendering at like the edge closest to the user. So in the end, is delivering images revolutionary? No, like images are part of the very early internet. But having a product that does it end to end needed like the right foundation and it needed to be launched at the right moment in time to not create that complexity in the company. And coming back to the focus is like, how can we make sure that we build products in the moment when we can actually build them efficiently, launch them efficiently and run them efficiently and not build them when the idea first comes up. To summarize this with another quote, success is simple, do what's right, the right way at the right time. And the right time is so crucial, seeing it actually with Zalando, but especially also with Cloudflare, making sure there is a right time for everything, but when you think about it, it might not be now. It might be later, because you first have to build the foundation to end up with your pyramid. OK, now we're back, back in Berlin, sitting at this table at the restaurant, having had most of the first bottle of wine, and discussing about, OK, how would, like, what can I do at Moonfire? How would, like, the next, next months, next weeks look like? And it was beginning of 2021 was, uh, 2022 was still a really, really good time for private equity, kind of. So I joined Moonfair in July, and well, in July when I joined, things started looking a bit different. Who, who is actually an investor? Who is in the investment private equity area? Do you remember 2022? Was it great? Yeah, kind of wasn't, was it? This is how, like the number of private equity funds that were launched since 21. And it kind of got pretty bad from 2022 on. And even 2024, that's the, that's the data from July, will still have a downturn in the number of funds that are launched. So when I talked to Lawrence, everything was still pretty cool. And when I joined, well, the sky already darkened a bit. And I joined a company that in 2021 turned everything that it touched to gold. It was a good time. Like regardless what product Moonfair launched, it, people bought it because there was no better way to invest than into private equity. So. What is Moonfair actually doing, you would ask? Well, Moonfair is enabling to like a way broader range of people to invest into private equity. And what we say is we want to democratize the access to private equity. Democratizing means we want to enable as many people as possible to invest into private equity products. And in 2021, Private equity products were the best thing, especially if you had a bit of money to put your money in because nothing else actually gave you like the, uh, like a, even a similar level of returns. So we were in uh, the champagne pyramid time. And then over the next weeks and months and years, we kind of rather got there. The private equity industry was on fire and we still hoped everything's going to be fine. But this actually gave us the initiation of looking at the third point of my three main points of focus, which is profitability. So Moonfair having raised a, a really significant round end of 2021, well, everything was champagne then. Uh, so money was not necessarily an issue, but still we realized, okay, we now need to look into what we actually focus on because otherwise even having a lot of money doesn't last forever if you're not having a clear path to profitability. 
And that was the theme that we then started, like from 2023 on, we really looked into how can we focus on the things that will actually lead Moonfair to be a profitable company. And the first one we needed to figure out who is actually the customer that we want to focus on. Is it this guy or her or her or is it maybe her? Or my favorite picture ever is actually this picture is like in a huge frame in our office. And I always have to laugh when I see it. The guy watering his lawn in his suit. Or is it maybe that lady? Or this guy? Or, or maybe this one? And the answer is, well, potentially all of them or potentially none of them. But we, what we did in 2023 is to talk to all of those types of customers, to look at our data, to really double down and going from, hey, we're just, we're just serving everyone because everything we do turns to gold, to, well, let's talk to those customers, let's look into the, uh, into the data, let's look into the funnel, and let's make sure we know who we're actually selling to. And we came up with a framework like starting with ultra high net worth individuals, high net worth individuals, mass affluent losers, uh, uh, users and retail investors. And we made the very, very tough decision to delay our democratization process because democratization for most of us means, well, of course we want to sell to everyone. Like, but that was not profitable. It couldn't work. So we decided we, have, we focus on ultra high net worth and high net worth individuals first, then go to affluent and then go to retail. Like remember the pyramid where I talked about earlier? Like it's the same thing. Let's start at like some point where we know how to deal with those investors and then let's get broader and broader. Let's start with where we know that this could make us money and go further to what to like the user groups where we actually need to build much more groundwork, where we knew, know that we need to do the groundwork and where we need to like build something that is completely different to what we need for like targeting high net worth individuals. And you've heard I'm a product guy, so I want to talk about product. And this is if you would turn the product vision of Moonfair in 2022, like if you make a picture out of it, it would be this. We have everything. We build, have every feature that you could imagine on the industry. Like we target every customer, every business model, and we'll just add everything to our platform because everything turns to gold. Do you remember? <sighs> But Moonfair is a 200 people company. Like we don't have neither the engineering nor the operations nor the product team to actually maintain such a platform that does everything. And that was like the main path that we had to go through is like to really go from this to that. And to really go from we have a platform that has everything and continuously go and kill functionality. There's no other way if you're in the position of everything is complex, you can't focus, you have a ton of features, you're spending more time on maintaining your platform than actually on building your platform, than maintaining your company, than actually continuing to grow your company, then you have to go from this to this and really make something that is extremely good, but that also has a really clear focus of what you're doing. So going back to the private equity industry, we see still going down, but we see one interesting thing if, you look, if we look at Moonfair AUM. We actually took the turn and we actually used all the flexing of our focus we could do in 2023 to turn around and actually starting to grow compared to the industry again. And that was 
really, really important, and that is the first path to profitability. Adding another quote here, the uh, simplest one, because less is more. Summarizing three different, three important things. Simplicity, time, profitability. Have those in mind when you're building your company, when you want to make sure that you stick to a focus and that you're not getting lost in complexity. This is the way on how to flex your focus. So you asked me, Mark, you talked 27 minutes now, or 25 minutes. Now what? So now I want every one of you to take a pen or a phone in your dominant hand and write on your hand what are you going to focus on in the next half year. Please, write down. Like, and then show your neighbor. What are you going to focus on? Anyone focusing on something? Or are you going to build like the everything? For me, I still remember that day in Berlin, sitting outside. And I'm happy that I made the decision to join Moonfair and to go on the ride, even though I didn't know what would expect, what I could expect, what I would need to do. But going through the time where you really have to figure out what your focus is, where you really have to figure out what is the thing you want to do, helped the company, but it also helped me personally a lot.